Hello, I am the Interstellar Mediator, Sol 13, Terra 3, Forest Monk, University Professor, Mother and Author. Greetings. This is the second action in a series of 12, one action per month for one year. There are three videos for action two, 2.1 Life is the Norm in Space, 2.2 Societies Conveyor Belts, 2.3 The Universal Key. These are three short presentations that have been composed to prepare you for action three and the events of the coming five years. I am speaking to the peoples of planet Earth. I am addressing all citizens, men, women, presidents, soldiers, scientists, religious leaders, teachers, workers, housewives, unemployed people. I am speaking to all because this topic deserves your attention and concerns you. I am speaking to you directly. This is a personal message. Here, Estimating the number of species on Earth is one of the great challenges of biology. This observation made by a large majority of biologists led two researchers, Professors J. T. Lennon and Kenneth J. Lossey, researchers in microbiology at the University of Bloomington in Indiana in the U.S., to create a database to try to collect them all. They compiled plant and animal microbial categories, aggregating dispersed databases from government scientists, academics, and private research labs. The results brought out more than 5.6 million microscopic and non-microscopic species from 35,000 ocean and continent locations on the planet, with the exception, however, of Antarctica. When they published their results, the two researchers explain that they have adopted new ecological laws that link biodiversity and abundance, and that this perspective has enabled them to better estimate the number of species of microorganisms. Their analysis concludes that there are a thousand billion microbial species in existence, whereas Earth sciences do not even know 1% of them. If this presentation is not intended to review their analysis in detail, we can nonetheless conclude without drawing any totally arbitrary generality that when the biotopes are fertile and viable, species thrive in abundance and therefore life too. Any gardener would tell you that a single handful of soil which is about 200 grams, contains very many living species. In fact, it contains 10,000. Needless to say, how life is abundant and prolific. And although the reasoning which follows moves from a scientific to a rather philosophical register, we can reasonably conclude that this principle of abundance is applicable to all life on Earth and therefore on other planets in space. 
The best proof of this principle is the discovery by NASA of 4,160 confirmed habitable exoplanets. The first was discovered in 1917, others in 1988 and 1992, and the number has grown to 4,160 today in 2020. 4,160 planets like yours. These habitable planets are scattered in 3,090 solar systems similar to yours, that is to say, one or more suns with planets around, 676 of which contain several habitable planets. To be the only single planet that holds life and species in the cosmos containing billions of galaxies themselves containing billions of suns and billions of planets is not logical. Frankly, it makes no sense. With a little common sense and a mind aroused by curiosity, it is easy to understand it and to adopt this reasoning seriously. It is time for everyone to do it. Indeed, if life is prolific on Earth, logically it must be prolific on any other habitable planet with viable biotopes. And if a handful of 200 grams of soil contains 10,000 microorganisms, we can reasonably think that a handful of 200 grams of cosmos contains as many microorganisms as this molecule that Earth is in light of the solar systems and planets considering the size of the universes. So let's be audacious and try to extend this reasoning a little further, at least for the length of this presentation. Let's say that not only are many planets habitable, but that they already are inhabited. Even if you are not aware of it yet, they are already all inhabited. Let's now turn our attention to the Milky Way. Here is the Milky Way seen from above. The interstellar races divided into four quarters the name quadrants. The solar system is called Sol 13, Earth Terra 3. Quadrant 4, in which Sol 13 is located, represents only a quarter of the Milky Way. In that quadrant alone, there are 400,000 intelligent human-type species not 60 or 90, as some researchers think, but 400,000. And we can multiply this figure by the four quadrants of the Milky Way. Imagine the number of species when you extend this reasoning to several galaxies, even to the universe. These 400,000 species are human. All of them look like you, like you Terrans. They have a head, eyes, nose, ears, hair, trunk, two arms, two legs, and as many fingers and toes as you. The skin colors are identical to yours, very white, white, peach, darker, light brown, dark brown, black and ultra-black. They love each other, form couples, create a family, mate, and have one or more children like you. They have feelings and emotions in a range from less emotional than you to much more emotional than you. 
They are in very good health. They live much longer than you and over a range of 120 to 1,200 years for human-like races. They have a house. They sit at a table to eat. They use chairs, cupboards, clothes, a shower, soap. They do exercise like you. And for those on mission on spaceships, what you call UFOs, they play sports in ultra-modern gyms. They listen to music, wear clothes similar to yours, do their dishes, and go to the bathroom just like you. On their planets, there are cities, villages, communities. Some planets have different types of seasons, and sunrise and sunsets can be purple, and others have two or three suns. There are no paved roads because they use the small round spaceships you call scout ships or tic tac as you use a car. For them, they are their cars. These are not UFOs. They are their little cars. These 400,000 species do not include fauna and flora or non-intelligent species. This figure, I repeat, is the number of intelligent human-type species. This figure only takes into account species similar to earthlings and they are so abundant that the interstellar races themselves have stopped listing them because they are far too many. And as a matter of fact, when you get closer to the center of the Milky Way, the planets are so numerous that they are extremely close and you can observe them directly with your own eyes. As you understand now, life is not rare. It abounds everywhere. It abounds on Earth. It is the norm here as it is the norm of the cosmos and the universe. It's a constant. All the planets in constellations or solar systems that you already know and which are very well listed on Earth, for example, Lyra, the Pleiades, Sirius, Triangulum, or even the closest planets to Earth, like Venus or Mars, are all not only habitable, but they already are inhabited. And some by people who look very much like you, and which, unfortunately, you ironically call little green men, Martians, high beings, or more commonly, extraterrestrials. Life is not the exception. It is the norm everywhere in the cosmos. But tell me, did it ever seem a little curious to you that life in the cosmos is presented as almost non-existent? That Earth would be the only planet where life and species thrive? Have you ever been surprised, for example, that although all the planets rotate on their own, the moon remains static, or when you look at it, it only has one side, always the same? Do you not find it a little bizarre that its surface changes and sometimes has a grayish appearance, sometimes a colored one, or a glossy polyurethane aspect, like a smooth skin, especially when you observe the craters and Mars, don't you find all of this a little bit out of place or odd and strange? 
as if there was a mystery you cannot decipher because you cannot go there and find out for yourself. So tell me, what is the reason why the entire population on earth, you, the great religious or education communities, the powerful scientific community, and all of humanity, that is to say, you, citizens of the world, inhabitants of the earth, keep hanging on to this aberrant concept of a cosmic emptiness so total that alone this tiny molecule that Earth is, in the light of the billions of galaxies that make up this universe, would be the only biotope of such a fertile and prolific life?